Hello John, today we're going to talk about Francis Ledwich. Hello uh, Oliver. Yes, uh, Francis Ledwich, uh, he was a poet that wrote over 200 poems. He was from Slane County Mead, uh, from a, a cottage uh, in that town where he was born and which is now a museum uh, to his memory. He was just uh, he he was just thirty uh, when he was killed in 1917 in Ypres, Belgium, uh, in the First World War. Uh, he had enlisted in 1914. Now, the background of Francis in this business of enlisting. Uh, has various elements attached to it. Okay. He, he, he was also known as the poet of the blackbirds. Well, he was. A matter of fact, a uh, name that was given to him was the blackbird of Slane. Uh, but he wrote about um, nature and he incorporated nature with events in some strange way. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of poets including Wordsworth and Yeats uh, and Keats and all these ones uh, spoke about nature. For example, Wordsworth said, 10,000 daffodils saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. He made other poems about nature. And likewise, William Butler Yeats made a, a poem about Lake water lapping at your feet and puppet stated, uh, what's this? Uh, and Linnet's wings, for peace comes dropping slow. Uh, he wrote a, a poem about a drum of hair uh, in County Leitham, uh, where he lived nearby. Uh, so Francis was in that tradition. Uh, he come from humble circumstances. Uh, there was a biggish family, and his father died when he was quite young. Now his mother, there was nine family, his mother at the time was advised for some of them to be put into care or orphanages, but she refused. She took on work in various houses. She, she worked from nearly dawn to dusk and kept the family together. She was a marvellous woman and he has one or two poems in praise of her. Um, Francis uh, went to school until he was 13 and a half, which was good. Some of his early poems were printed in the Drought Independent. So the importance of local newspapers in Francis's development was very important. Also, a nearby neighbour, Lord Dunsany, become a friend and a mentor and made Francis known to a wider public, including the poets at the time. So he was a great help and enabler and saw the talent that Francis Ledwich had. I think he introduced them to Yeats. He did. Yeah. He introduced them to the poets. Uh, he had great belief in Francis. So that was a big influence in his life. Now, in the meantime, Francis was into other places. For example, he was the secretary of the Irish Volunteers, right. which was founded uh, to um, look for Irish freedom, uh, which was started because of the um, Unionists in the North, founding the Ulster Volunteer Force with the connivance of the British government to establish, um, uh, to Im import arms which they did without let or hindrance. Um, we were promised home rule uh, during that period by the British government, which was introduced in the Commons but defeated in the Lords. 
the people in the north, the unionists, objected to it and Lord Carson came into power there. So it was a very unstable political situation. Francis was also in the Nava, in the Mead, Garden Association, which was a kind of a county council sort of affair, and he was in that. Now, Fran Francis <coughs> at the time uh, was one of the few when the war broke out, Redmond was the leader of the Irish Volunteers and he suggested that in order for to get the Home Rule he advised all the Volunteers to enlist in the British Army and save civilization. So it caused a split. 175,000 Volunteers followed Redmond, 13,500 followed Pierce and others that objected. Francis Ledwards was one of these people that objected to Redmond's call to volunteer for the British Army. But he was insulted and abused by the people in the volunteers in, in Slade and in Mead, in Mead because uh, he, 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 he wouldn't follow the Redmond's things. He was a lone voice, him and his brother Joe and about three others. So that was Francis's background. He also was going with a girl called Emily um, Coley or Coley or something, and a, new, and a name that I, just um, her surname just escapes me. But he was going with a lady, and she and he even wrote poems about her. But she fell for another, a man called O'Neill. A tragedy occurred there, and I think that was one of the reasons because she was squaring him around the town, or he was squaring this lady that Francis was in love with, Wonderbird Warden, and it was his girlfriend. So this fellow was squaring around the town, and Ledwidge was getting abused about it from friends when he would have be having a drink somewhere. So <clears throat> In the meantime, as I say, uh, Redmond was doing this, so he enlisted on the rebound in the army. Okay, in the British Army. He went up to Enniskillen and then joined the enlisted in the Enniskillen Fusiliers, which Lord Dunsany had also done. But Lord Dunsany was disgusted when he found it that Redmond because had or that, that uh, Francis Ledwidge had done that because he had offered him a, a home and a room to pursue his poetry and give him a stipend, give him a, a, a wage. He's very kind. He is very kind. Uh, but don't forget we were in an unstable situation in the country at that time as we have been in with regard to the North ever, you know, up to recently. So um, it is with the background of poor Francis enlisted with a broken heart. Anyways, one of the things, some of his poems This is one that I found and was about you. The wind the wind wheel not to gather in the snow. No, soon the swallows will be fly, flying south. The wind wheel not to gather in the snow. Even the roses spilt on youth's red mouth will soon go down the roses. The road on roses go. Very perceptive. And this is one to one dead. But sorrow and silence are the words trendy, he says. The silence for you and the sorrow for me. This was about the girl that she died. She married this individual and went to live in Manchester and died seven months afterwards in childbirth. He was stationed over there at the time and he took five days off to, it, to go and attend her funeral yeah. in Slane. I mean, there's a story there. One day. The silence for you and the sorrow for me. And then when he was in, um, about a month I think before he was killed, uh, he wrote, he, he was, he, wherever he was, there was a broken bush and he says, this is a song a robin sang 
this morning on a broken tree that calls across the world to me. I mean, nice. isn't that perceptive? That's isn't lovely. that a poet of the best order with, with what would I call it, um, a great future ahead of him? By the way, the girlfriend that uh, died, who was a purely attended to, his family didn't consider Ledwidge good enough. He was from a cottage oh. where she was a farmer's daughter. And the guy she married would have been of the class of, would have been from a similar type of class as Francis Ledwidge, but he was a, a more of a, whatever it was, different. And uh, for some reason, other this unfortunate girl fell, fell for him. And she met her maker quite soon afterwards, really. And Francis, one time he was in, he, he, his mother got him a job as a, a grocer's apprentice in Ratfarnham in Dublin, no, in Ratgar in Dublin. And that would have been a good area. I knew a man that got a job there as an apprentice in the bar business, Danny Morris from Kells, become a deputy lord mayor in Dublin, Fianna Fáil councillor, had two pubs he come on well. He was from Kells, I knew him. <coughs> and it was, um, Francis said this, I could not bear the brick hedge about his time at Dublin. He, he walked back one night, he left us after being there not, that, not too long, walked back to Slain. And the, he, he was in the shed in the back of the house and his brother Joe, who to work with, he was very close to Joe, Joe saw him and brought him in. He wanted to go back to home. And anyways, um, he also, Thomas McDonough, one of the signatures of the proclamation that was executed by the British in command of jail along with Parry Pierce and all the other signatures, uh, a lament for him because he, he knew him and he was close to him. He shall not hear the bitter cry in the wild sky where he is laid nor voices of the sweeter birds above the wailing of the rain. Nor shall you know when loud March blows through slanting snow her fanfare shrill blowing to me to, to flame the golden cup of many an upset daffodil. But when the dark cow leaves the moon, the dark cloud leaves the moon, and pastures pure with greedy weeds. Perhaps he'll hear her low at morn, lifting her, lifting her, 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 her horn in pleasant meads. Uh, <coughs> this was Francis. He, 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 he saw he saw beauty and everything. He, he he was able. He had this marvelous gift, and it was great. There would, would have been great poems coming from Franklin had he lived. His, some of his songs, uh, don't say any. Lord, don't say any. Got some of his uh, poems printed, and he the, he got money for that. That was worth about six months' wages Very good. on the road. The song in the woods. The ship on the sea, the song is for you, and the ship is for me. Now, as I say, he wrote 200 poems. I've tried to just give a flavour of some of his um, observations, which, when he spoke about nature, you can see that there was elements in it referring to the human person. He wrote a lovely one about his mother. Uh, which will be for another day. Uh, but this is a book that I've read, I read, and an autobiography about him, and some beautiful poems. Uh, here's one here to Alice of the Fair Hair, that's the lady I was telling you about. Uh, and uh, here's one about his mother. And you just read a little bit about it. God made my mother on an April day, from sorrow and the mist along the sea, 
Lost birds and wanderer songs and ocean spray, and the moon loved her wandering gently. He wrote that when he was in hospital.